Tab Nation. <clears throat> it's your boy Tom, and today we're going to be doing another intro video. This one specifically doing with System Git. It's a great way to get uh, different information from your computer, monitors, keyboard, mouse, all that kind of stuff. <clears throat> There's a lot of different things you can do. Um, for example, let's take a look at the actual documentation. Link in the description below specifically to this page. Um, but the main thing we're looking at is here. So we got like commonly used. Um, so there's a lot of different things you can do here. All the different numbers correspond to something, which we'll explain a little bit better. Uh, not commonly used, you know, I guess stuff that you use less. Why not? Uh, but yeah, there's a, there's a lot of stuff you can see here uh, as far as retrieving system information. Um, so you just find uh, the number, which you'll see what you do with that here. Um, and then, you know, to list uh, what it is and description and all that. So, you know, number of displays on desktop, not including non-display, the CEDO monitors. And that would be the number 80. <clears throat> so, yeah. So let's take a look at the code, shall we? So we're going to be doing version 1 and version 2, talk a little bit about the differences there. Um, but it's pretty straightforward regardless which version you're using. So as you can see here, I have the requires. So we make sure that we are launching in B1, uh, 0.1, point, and then whatever version. Uh, you can manipulate this to whatever version you want if you want it to be specific or just above a certain version like I'm doing now. Uh, so for our hotkey, we're going to be using F1 uh, for the first one. Let me go ahead and launch this actually uh, so we can do this step by step. So the first one we're doing is basically we're going to be using system git. So it's just S-Y-S-G-E-T. It doesn't have to be capitalized like that. Uh, it just looks better when you do it that way uh, from a formatting point of view. We're going to use a comma, and then we're going to use uh, what our variable is going to be. So the variable can be whatever you want um, as long as it matches wherever you're using the data. So I'm using just a simple message box. Obviously you do whatever you want with this. Um, you know, you could have like if statements, like if mouse contains, uh, say you have a program, for example, that requires a scroll wheel. You could have a check where it does a system to get to actually see if the mouse currently has a scroll wheel. And if it doesn't, you could have an if statement with a message box that has like, uh, unable to de detect uh, scroll wheel, please install a new mouse or something in case maybe your program requires you to have something very specific like that. You could use that for something like this. I've used this a lot for like GUIs and uh, different stuff like that. So yeah, that's going to be our variable. It can be whatever you want. That's where it's going to store whatever the answer is. And the number 43. So let's take a look here. So we're going to look for the number 43 on this list right there. That's where we're using that number. Like I said, number of buttons on the mouse. It will equal zero if there is no mouse installed. Obviously, I have a mouse. So let's go ahead. We're going to press F1. And there we go. I have 16 buttons on my mouse, which sounds right. 12. Yep, 16. So I have 16 because I have a gaming mouse, just in case you're curious why I have so many. Actually, I could probably throw it in the camera here slightly if it, the cord reaches. So see, I got like all the uh, buttons on the side there and on the top. Hopefully that is somewhat viewable. <laughs> uh, so there's that one. Next, we're going to do F2. Just another example. We're doing uh, our um, variable is just going to be uh, width and height, basically, of the monitors. Uh, it's going to be the main one, 78, 79. Let's take a look at the description on that one if we can find it. Here it is, 78 and 79. They're together because they're basically the same thing, just different directions, X and Y. Uh, width and height of the virtual screen in pixels. Um, so yeah, definitely read through these so you can see the capabilities of what all there is available, just so you know for the future. You don't have to memorize them all. Uh, there's no way I'm memorizing what every number does, um, so I don't expect you to either. So we're going to push F2, and um, <clears throat> there we go. We got our message box, and I just typed in W equals the variable, which you put in percent signs in version 1, and then height equals percent signs, the variable there for height. 
and there we go that is the height and width uh hopefully you can read that i mean it doesn't really matter if you can because you don't need to know my dimensions you care about yours so yeah there is that i could see this one being used more for like gaming for something maybe uh resizing a window would be helpful with something like that i could see that with like a gui being very helpful or uh just changing the properties of a window to match so yeah so the last one in version one that we have here is going to be our hockey as f3 um something that i'm doing here i wanted to show you because we're getting a little fancy is there is some that are built in so as you see here i have the exact same setup the only difference is i'm not using a number here I'm using monitor count and that's because i believe it's towards the top yeah here we go we got some uh, very specific ones so there's monitor count there so there's a few that have to do with the monitor and then there's the number ones here that we already looked at so there are a few that are like built in that you don't have to use the number i mean you can but you could do it this way too so that's what we're doing here monitor count we're just going to save it at the exact same name keep it easy uh system git we're doing a monitor primary, getting that information. We're then going to use a message box to display all this information, um, kind of, you know, with uh, the text of what it is with the variable, uh, some line breaks to make it look good. We're then going to hit a loop and we're doing a monitor count. So we grabbed it up here. So, for example, I have two monitors. So it sees that, hey, you got two monitors. It's then going to loop two times because we're using that versus looping forever. We want a way that it's gonna do what it needs to do and then be done when it's supposed to be done. So that's why we're doing that here. We're then gonna do a few more system gets. Uh, we're gonna do monitor name. And here we're adding another uh, field here into the syntax at the end. So we're doing the same thing here, basically but we're adding a index. In case you don't know what that is, it's a built-in variable that basically every time that hits, it counts. Zero, one, two, three, four. Obviously here it's only going to do it twice. <clears throat> uh, then we're going to do the same thing here. Monitor a index. Uh, put it inside of uh, parentheses there because that's a variable. Uh, that's how version 1 works. Uh, system git. Monitor area. So we're just getting a bunch of random information. But it's only going to loop twice. And each time it's going to display a message box. So we should uh, just see that twice. So let's go ahead and F3. There we go. So right away we're hitting that first message box at line 25, which I guess you can't see the lines. So let's do that. There we go. That's a little better for you guys. Monitor count two. Primary monitor is one. Sounds right. We're going to push OK. We're now going to go into the loop. And there's a whole bunch of information. Uh, the name of it, obviously I've never renamed it or anything. It's just called display one, uh, left, right zero by uh you know these measurements all that kind of stuff push okay one again so as you see monitor number one now we got monitor number two same thing it's just called display two got a bunch of coordinates of it and uh, all that information and we push okay and because it only was supposed to go twice it's done <clears throat> so now we hit here which is the end obviously if there's more code down here you should probably uh put a return here or you could put a message box here saying, like, um, all done. So you could do whatever you want um, there. Um, so, yeah, let's take a look at version 2 now. Now, version 2, that is not the right code. Here we go. Not jumping too deep into this because it's pretty self-explanatory, but as you see here, requires version 2 or higher. Um, we're using F1 here, so let me close out my last script and launch this one. It should be running. Uh, so we're running in version 2 now. Uh, we're doing F1. Big differences, if you haven't seen my previous videos, is everything is a function now. Um, so you just need to put the curly brackets uh, where your code normally would be. In version 1, you could just have this code and it would work, but here you're going to have to put the curly brackets at the beginning and the ending of your function or it will act weird or not launch at all probably probably get an x or uh, exit now error um so here things are a little bit different we're still using that system git uh phrase um we're still using the same numbers but we are doing it slightly different we're putting the variable of where we want to store it 
first versus building it into the syntax of the system git. We're then using the little uh, clock thingies here. I can never remember what they're called with an equal sign. System git, same spelling and everything. And then in parentheses, we're putting the number. Honestly, uh, I have a lot of differences on version one, version two. For example, version one, I think is better with GUIs. I just find them easier than version two. I mean, sure, it has a lot of cool new functionality in a sense, I guess. But I like GUIs in version one way better than I like them in version two, just because it's definitely a step in a different direction. Uh, but something like this, I love this layout where the variables first and you're just doing a very simple, you know, system get, what are we doing? What's the number or the data that we want in parentheses? Super clean. I think this looks beautiful. Same thing, message box, mouse count. Uh, I think I did say I launched this, so F1. There we go. Same thing, 16 buttons. Uh, just a quick point out uh, with the difference between version 1 and version 2 message box. I've done a video on this. Check that out. Um, but basically, uh, if it's variable, you just put it there. You don't put it in parentheses. It's just straight up just the name of the variable, basically. Uh, but watch that video for a little bit more description. For, or for uh, F2, same thing. We're doing virtual uh, our width and height. Once again, no parentheses, we're just displaying the variables here, super simple, using the same thing here, 78, 79, F2, there we go. Uh, obviously, I didn't put a space properly in here, so that's fine, but um, basically, you just split this down the middle between the 8 and 1, and that's your uh, height and width, or width and height. Uh, so yeah, like I said, watch the videos on that. All right. Hopefully this is something that's helpful for you. I was surprised I've never done a video about this. Um, just so you all know, I have a lot of intro videos that I'm planning uh, to come out just to kind of play catch up. There's a lot of commands out there that I've just, like this, I've just never made a video for some reason. Um, so slowly I'm actually going through kind of like the documentation here on the side, as you can see. Well, here, let me see a little better. And kind of just going through and be like, oh, let, I haven't done a video about Clipwig. I haven't done a video about DPI scaling. So I'm kind of just revisiting some of the basics uh, for you all. And I plan to do everything in both version 1 and version 2 code. If you guys like this video, definitely hit the like. It lets me know exactly which kind of videos you're really interested in. And subscribe. Obviously, I'm doing one, two videos every single week half and the 90 percent of the time do with auto hotkeys but i do branch out into other languages just a quick topic on it maybe three or four videos in other languages just to help you introduce you to something new maybe you're ready to move on from auto hotkeys and lo uh, learn something uh, new or just want to know what's out there in the world uh, that's what i do all right everybody thank you see you on the next one mm -hmm.